Welcome to today's episode, where we explore how imaging program plays a vital role in health screening and promoting longevity. From early disease detection to personalized care, imaging is transforming the way we approach preventative health. Today, we have Dr. Hidayat Ansari, Interim Chief of Imaging Department, Chief of the Nuclear Medicine Section, and we have Dr. Alok Anand, Chair of the Diagnostic Imaging. Welcome, and I'll let you introduce yourself. Thank you again, Issam. My name is Hidayat Ansari. I'm the Chair of Nuclear Medicine and Molecular Imaging Institute. So I'm very privileged to be here today, and I want to discuss about how imaging technologies are playing an increasing important role in disease detection and how we can support and promote longer health and healthier lives. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Alok Anand. I'm the Chairman of Diagnostic Radiology here at Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi. I'd like to focus today talking about some of the ongoing screening initiatives that we have, encompassing things like low-dose CT, whole body MRI, brain assessment, as well as the innovative new concept of opportunistic screening. We all know that screening is important and that the early detection can be crucial, potentially allowing for treatment before disease progression. Can you please give us some examples? Sure, excellent question. Imaging, in particular, useful in lung screening, The U.S. Preventative Services Task Force has recently updated its recommendations so that any person at risk between the ages of 50 and 80 who hasn't quit smoking uh, greater than 15 years prior be included in screening initiatives. Essentially, what we do is we determine a person's lifetime risk based on the number of pack years they smoked. And the way we calculate that is by taking the number of packs smoked per day multiplied by the number of years smoked which gives us an assessment of a person's overall lifetime risk of developing lung cancer. At Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi, we recommend yearly screenings performed under the supervision of a pulmonologist. We make use of something called the Lung RADS lexicon, which helps us to standardize reporting and create uniform, uh, replicable recommendations for patients for follow-up or further intervention. Is there any risk for, of radiation exposure? In which case, is it really worth it for the patient? That's a very good question. Look, so is, is the patient receiving increased dose due to the repeated screening? What are the, your views on that? Excellent question. In patients with an elevated risk of developing lung cancer, it is generally accepted that the risks of radiation are far outweighed by the benefits to be obtained by early disease detection. That is to say, if we can diagnose the disease early, we're more likely to be able to cure it and therefore give patients a longer life expectancy. As far as the radiation dose that's involved, it's a very small dose. um, And for comparison, it's less than half of what the average American would receive from background radiation uh, to put things in perspective. Beyond specific cancer screenings, some people are exploring more comprehensive imaging for preventative health. One such technique is whole body MRI. Uh, Can you tell us more about the the technique and the advantage of it? Absolutely. So whole body MRI has evolved in the last couple of years, particularly with the increasing technological innovations and AI softwares. What we are able to do is condense multiple body parts scanned and do it together in a short frame time and create an image of the whole body and that thereby increasing value to patient's diagnosis. What we do is we scan from the brain, rather head to toe, in a way that the brain, the heart, the muscles, and the abdominal structures, everything are imaged in one go. We kind of stitch the images together and we can display not only for uh, visual purposes, for assessment purposes in a way that we can identify any disease hiding in any part of that particular scan. Mm. Now you have mentioned this is a two-hour study. What is your take on that? That's a myth, actually. It's not a two-hour study. And I think uh, patients who are probably claustrophobic probably get more concerned from the start when they hear something like this. It, with the available AI softwares and advanced technologies at Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi, we are able to reduce the scan time to in between 45 minutes to one hour and thereby getting a short duration of scan, good quality scan, and not compromising on the diagnostic element. 
Now that you have mentioned the AI, let's talk about the concept that is gaining traction nowadays and opportunistic screening. What is, what is it and how Cleveland Clinic is ad adopting this method? Very good question. Opportunistic screening is an approach which aims to systematically leverage the rich data which is available on the imaging studies. Those imaging studies which may have been done for a totally different reason, but we have uh, data points within that particular study which may not be related to patient symptoms, but yet we can extract that and make meaningful information out of that. By doing this, what we can uh, do is identify hidden diseases, disorders, and act on that in a faster and a better manner. To give you an example, let's think about a patient who comes in for a CT scan for a kidney stone or for someone who comes for a chest X-ray in a patient with cough. But we have much more information hidden there and we can extract that, identify the problem, disseminate to the referring physician and uh, and in a way to a specialist who can be involved for that particular patient's care. Very interesting. Thank you. Can you give us some examples of that? Yeah. So I think before I go into example, it's very important to understand we are moving away from reactive medicine in which you are dealing with the symptoms to proactive medicine. In a way, we are detecting diseases earlier and we are actually uh, referring to specialist care pathways for these particular patients so that they are managed better. Thank you. Actually, you asked an example. Maybe Alok, you want to share that? Sure. I'd be happy to share. So say, for example, a patient comes to the emergency department and gets a CT scan to evaluate for kidney stones. By looking at the bones, we can make a quantitative assessment of their overall bone health and identify diseases like osteoporosis. Similarly, we can look at the visceral fat within the body and also make a quantitative assessment to determine their risk of developing metabolic syndrome. We can look at things like the liver to look at the percentage of fat fraction, what we call fatty liver or steatosis. And we can also make uh, predictive assessments looking at the amount of scarring, uh, which can lead to something called cirrhosis. So these are examples of things that we can, uh, as you said, extracting data mm -hmm. for imaging that may be performed for other purposes. Very good. I think this is just the beginning. I think there is so much information and with so much innovation and AI tools, we can uh, skin the cat in many ways. Very good. Thank you. This, this move towards extracting more information from imaging uh, aligns with the principle of, of precision medicine. Could you please illustrate to us with an example what we offer at CCED? Sure. Precision medicine is about giving a precise diagnosis, right? In our Molecular Imaging Institute at Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi, we use multiple biomarkers which give precise uh, diagnosis, and that's where the precision imaging comes from, right? So to give you an example, we take care of patients with Alzheimer's disease. Now, what we do is we identify a protein, a bad protein which gets deposited in the brain. And what we do for that is we use amyloid markers and we are able to identify exactly where the amyloid is deposited in the brain, how severe it is, is it causing dementia, is it causing the cognitive dysfunction of that particular patient, and then treat these patients, monitor their treatment, to, and identify how we can help these patients with, who, are, uh, who probably did not have a precise diagnosis uh, at the start. This exemplifies the advancing patient care which we offer, particularly with precision neurodegenerative disorders and therefore promoting brain health and longevity. Okay, team. Now let's shift gears and talk about our team's initiatives to improve patient education and access to all of the great services that we offer. First question. Across our internet and in clinical spaces, we have made efforts to keep our patients informed about our various imaging screening programs. From time to time, we have cancer screening programs and particularly in conjunction with our family medicine physicians and other specialists. We identify and encourage at-risk patients to participate and take time in imaging screening studies to improve patient access and experience where we appropriate. We support walk-ins, services, self-scheduling through our portals, and even same-day reporting services. In conclusion, imaging is already a critical part of many established screening programs like breast cancer, like lung cancer, for example. 
As we advance with technologies like whole body MRI, there is a potential for broader preventive screening to be explored. While significant challenges persist in terms of widespread deployment, we've already seen that the benefits to be gained from initiating these screening initiatives um, in improving patient care and enhancing longevity is clear. It's clearly an exciting time for imaging and preventative health. Thank you, Dr. Hidayat, and thank you, Dr. Alok. Thank you. I totally agree, and I think together at the leadership of Imaging Institute, we are doing a great effort, both with new technologies, new imaging studies, patient access, and I think there's more to come. Thank you, Dr. Hidayat. Thank, thank you, Dr. Alok. Thank you, guys.